This is uh, some of the most interesting types of artifacts we have here at the Department of Historic Resources. These have been recovered since the 19th century. Folks wondered what on earth they were. They're very highly polished. They're pretty uh, ornate, certainly decorative. Uh, and they were confused archaeologists for many, many years. And what archaeologists finally decided that these things were obviously high status items. And in fact, early on, they called them banner stones. And what they thought was that the chief would have a staff. And on this staff, he'd have some of these stones, which would demonstrate his high status within the village itself. Uh, did further research on several sites. And you can see the, the variety here is just amazing. But uh, research on several sites, particularly sites that uh, uh, they had a lot of these uh, found in, in, in Kentucky. And the question was finally answered, uh, not only by looking at artifacts, but also examining uh, other cultures around the world. And I don't know if you guys realize it, but archaeology is not an independent study in itself. Archaeology is a subdiscipline of anthropology. Anthropology is the study of all cultures, all people, at all times, everywhere. Archaeology is the study of extinct cultures, cultures that no longer exist. But in order to get a better understanding of these cultures, we can look at cultures that are at the same level of social organization and then use some of the analogies from those cultures to determine how artifacts like these were used. Let me show you a, uh, a reconstruction of how these things were used. So, you've seen those artifacts, now we have to figure out what they are, right? And that's part of archaeology, it's the, it's the mystery of trying to figure out what these things were used for. Uh, and so we looked at uh, the other cultures that were still in existence and artifacts that they uh, used. And perhaps you'll recognize this, very similar to what we were seeing in the drawer. And this indeed is what we call and figured out was an atlatl weight. And this is an atlatl which throws this spear. Atlatl is a term that was uh, borrowed from uh, South America, from Mesoamerica, where they still use these, th use these things uh, during the contact period. And in essence, what we have here is a spear thrower. Now, before this, a spear could be thrown by hand. And I'm sure the uh, uh, Native Americans were very accurate with that. But with the atlatl, with the spear thrower, it works as a simple machine lever action and when you throw this it doesn't leave your hand at the same level what happens is it extends upward and as you th can thrust it it adds distance and accuracy and so this thing flies off and hopefully fits the prey the atlatl weight was an invention that helped not only with the the distance by providing more weight uh, to the throw, but it also balanced, helped to balance the spear itself. So this is quite an invention. This is uh, something that uh, we don't use a whole lot today. So in order to figure it out, archeologists had to um, not only look at the archeological record, but they had to look at the ethnographic record as well. One of the mysteries was how did they get the hole in the atlatl weight? Obviously with a hole, they can, more adequately tie the atlatl into place. The hole itself was drilled. It was probably drilled uh, using uh, an abrasive like sand and a stone tool and many, many hours of work. Uh, these polished stone tools such as the atlatl are not easily made. And I'm sure that the person, the hunter that was using these things was quite proud of his, uh, his the, the weight and probably the atlatl itself. Uh, also, you can see the relationship with these things uh, with the detachable tip, which is another interesting invention. So instead of having to carry 10 spears, what they would carry in their quiver was 10 of these. And they throw the atlatl spear, they basically hit the quarry, if they didn't, they'd retrieve the 
the spear itself, and then they'd rehaft it with another spear point. So it's, you know, it's efficiency, uh, accuracy, efficiency, and an amazing tool that uh, probably was used in Virginia for upwards to six to 8,000 years. So very, very interesting tool.